Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Sunday, January 27, 2013, and this is your probably one of the final updates you're going to get on the uh, Zero Fossil Fuel rocket stove. Um, it is completely installed. If I do anything else to this, it would be to perhaps add a fresh air inlet that comes up from the floor directly in front of the firebox and just makes a bend into the firebox and I'll regulate the flow by lifting this brick up and down out of the, out of the feed tube. But uh, other than that, it is completely installed. I have the flue pipe through a homebrew thimble. Uh, the thimble has been uh, created out of a six inch piece of uh, galvanized flue pipe and uh, I cut it to a length of six and three quarters, which, which gave me one inch extension on the outside of the wall and on the inside of the wall that permitted me to bend the tabs over on the outside and inside, giving me a six inch pass through. In this next photo, you see I've got a, uh, I have my four inch pipe inserted and uh, the insulation stuffed around it to prevent any drafts from coming in and to create the dead air space on the flue pipe going out. Outside in this next photo you see uh, the, uh, the horizontal section of the flue pipe and it makes a bend underneath the soffit, goes vertically up to the uh, flue cap and uh, out from there. One of the things that I ran into last night when I test fired the stove is the angle of this uh, horizontal piece is very important. Um, when I came in this morning and pulled everything apart to finish the thimble through the wall, I found a pool of water that was frozen in the bottom of the tube. Um, the, the rocket stove produced so much steam that, and the temperatures were so cold outside last night that as they exited the tube they froze or they condensed and pooled in the bottom of the of the pipe. So what I made sure to do was uh, tip the angle of that horizontal section down as it exits the the, uh, the workshop and there is a small drain hole at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of this horizontal section before it makes the angle upward to allow any steam condensed steam that drips down to drip out and not back into the rocket stove. Last night during the inaugural test run uh, I did a whole bunch of temperature measurements and uh, what, I, what I ended up with was a maximum temperature at the top of the tank of 580 degrees. Uh, at that point the temperature on the side walls and at the bottom of the tank were approximately 280 degrees, uh, a little bit under 300 degrees, and my flue temperature at the top was 140 degrees going out. So uh, all of the all of the gases had a chance to cool before they exited, and they cooled down to a temperature of 140 degrees. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to light the stove for the second time now that the flue is hundred percent complete last night I just had a four inch hole with the flue pipe going out uh, just as a test because I was really anxious to get this thing tested and, and fired up and now that the installation is complete I'm gonna fire it up again and we're gonna see how long it takes for it to warm up in the workshop the temperature right now as I start is 45 degrees and uh, the time right now is a little bit after 2 p.m. So the sun will be setting soon and uh, let's fire this mother up. Okay so I'm still a bit of a newbie at uh, trying to light this thing. If uh, I get a little, little blowback, please cut me some slack. but. Uh, Let's, let's give this a try here again. Got a few pieces of paper that I'm gonna use to just start the draft and set my sticks on it. All right. 
Got my little kindling here and my lighter. And I don't think that's going to be enough paper. I've got some nice pieces of birch bark. Oh my god, it's already running. I don't need it. Okay. Be darned, it's already going. Last night I did this, I, it took me several tries. Well, cool. I'm not going to argue with this. It's a close up of what I'm looking at. Quite surprised I got it to start this easily. Last night I did have a quite a bit harder time. Maybe the vertical portion of the chimney stack that I put outside is aiding the initial draft enough to uh, get this thing started. So that's it from the lab. I'll be uh, taking temperature measurements, seeing how long it takes to uh, get the temperature up here in the, uh, in the workshop. And uh, that's it, the Zero Fossil Fuel Rocket Stove. Everyone take care. Hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. Really had a lot of fun building this. Uh, and uh, great big shout out to a number of my uh, nerd herd in the Justin TV chat room who frequently gather with me and share ideas along the way. Uh, got a shout out to uh, Shubis, uh, Tippy, Kane, Critter, Adirondacks, uh, and uh, anybody else that I forget, I'm sorry. But uh, thank you guys, appreciate all your input. Been a great big help. For anyone interested in live wildlife streaming, I would recommend a website called CritterWindow.com. I will post a link down below to the website. Uh, he's one of my regulars in the chat room and he's got a very, a very cool live video feed that runs 24-7 in Indiana. Not too far from uh, Russ Grease, RWG Research. He's probably about an hour, hour's drive from Russ. So uh, interesting stuff that he broadcasts and if you ever have a chance, swing by CritterWindow.com take a look at his website as well. Everyone, take care. I'm going to see, uh, try to warm up now next to the uh, rock stove and uh, get some other work done. Peace, everyone.